Number 35, professional application. Two piloted satellites approaching one another at a relative speed of 0.25 meters per second, intending to dock. The first has a mass of 4 times 10 to the 3 kilograms, and the second a mass of 7.5 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. Letter A. Calculate the final velocity after docking by using the frame of reference in which the first satellite was originally at rest. All right. So here's our picture. Here's the first satellite, second satellite. They're both coming together because uh, they're intending to dock. First satellite has a mass of 4 times 10 to 3 kilograms. Second satellite has a mass of 7.5 times 10 to 3 kilograms. They don't tell us their velocities in the first part, right? They tell us the relative speeds. Um, but they want us for letter A to calculate uh, the final velocity of this docking, um, assuming that the first satellite is at rest. Okay, so it's at rest. So therefore, we actually do know this, right? It's going to be for this part of the problem, it's zero meters per second. So now think about the nature of this question. you got two objects coming together. After they dock, they're going to stick together. Sounds like a conservation of momentum problem to me, right? And specifically an inelastic collision, right? Conservation of momentum. So let's use this formula over here on the right-hand side. That says that the momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum after the collision, or the initial is equal to the final. However you want to frame it, I like to do before versus after. So before the collision, there's two separate objects, right? So therefore, I can write now the momentum of the first object plus the momentum of the second object should equal the momentum of the uh, consolidated object or the object taken together because they're going to stick together. Let's expand now on each of the momentums. Remember that momentum is equal to mass multiplied by velocity. So now expanding the uh, you know momentum of the first of the first satellite, I can write the mass of the first satellite multiplied by the velocity of that first satellite before the collision. Right? I should have little befores here. Right? Plus then the mass of the second satellite multiplied by the velocity of that second sec second oh my goodness what's going I can't speak right now multiplied by the velocity of that second satellite um, before the collision should equal then the total mass multiplied then by the final velocity of both of them taken together right because they're stuck together now so it's one unit after the collision. So we know that the uh, initial velocity here of the first satellite is zero and therefore this whole term drops out. So then I can just simplify this to be m2 v2b, right, is equal to mt vf. And we're looking for, it says, the final velocity. Therefore, divide out the total mass. And here's our nice, beautiful formula. So we get now m2 v2b all over mt. Okay. Now, I should have mentioned before, um, but right, you might be saying, well, what is, what is v2b? I made a little mistake here, I noticed. Not, nothing in the equation, just in terms of my subscript um, right over here. Okay, that should be a two there. So let me just erase that. All right. So you might say, well, we don't know what V2B is. And that's true, but we kind of do, right? I mean, um, since we're taking it from the frame of reference of the first satellite being at rest, and the relative velocity between the two was going to be 0.25 meters per second, then we actually do know that this should be then 0 0.250 meters per second, just because we're taking from the frame of reference of this satellite being stationary. Now realize that I showed this pointing to the left and therefore this has to be negative, okay? So now when I plug it into my formula, now I have everything I need, right? So M2 was 7.50 times 10 to the third times a V2B, which was negative 0.250, all over then the total mass. So that's going to be the 7.50 times 10 to the three, the mass of that satellite, plus the mass of the other satellite, 4.00 times 10 raised uh, to the third. And that will equal the final velocity. Let's plug it on in. So we got 7.5 times 10 to the third, multiplied by negative, uh, Oops, negative 0.25, and then divide that now by, in, in terms of parentheses, 7.5 times 10 to the 3 plus 4 times 10 to the 3. And we get a value of negative, so negative uh, 0 0.163. Okay, let me just clean up that 6 a little bit, 6, 3, and that's in terms of meters per second. Now, the answer is negative. 
Uh, reason why is because you know the mass. If 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 you're looking at these two objects taken together, um, you know not only is this object moving to the left, but it's also more massive, right, than the first satellite. So therefore, after the collision, it should this system taken together should be traveling to the left. So that makes sense. So that is a uh, letter. That's letter A, right? Okay. So now it wants to know what is the loss of kinetic energy in this inelastic collision. So now for letter B, right? We've set up this equation before that the kinetic energy, right, lost, right, should be equal to the initial value, okay, the kinetic energy initially, minus the kinetic energy finally. All right, think about it as if you tried to figure out how much money you lost at a casino. If you started with 100 and you ended up leaving the casino with 80, how much, how much money did you lose? You lost 20, right? You just subtract the two. So that's why it's initial minus final. So um, expanding on this, right, kinetic energy lost will be equal to the initial kinetic energy. Now, initially, uh, we have both of these objects over here separated, right? So there's really the kinetic energy of the first satellite initially plus the kinetic energy of the second satellite initially, right? In brackets, if you like, minus then the final kinetic energy. Now, just thinking ahead a little bit here, what is the initial kinetic energy of object one over here? What's the initial kinetic energy? Remember, kinetic energy is a function of velocity. It's one half mv squared. What's the velocity of the first satellite? Zero. So therefore, the kinetic energy here is also zero initially for the first satellite. So now I'm just going to kinetic energy lost will be equal to uh, basically just the kinetic energy of the second object initially. So I'm going to expand on that already. One half the mass of that second object multiplied by its initial velocity squared or before the collision, that is, minus then the final, which would be one half. The, remember, the final state is now when these two objects are taken together. So therefore, the mass, I need to consider the total mass and multiplied by its final velocity that we just found over here, squared. So now let's just throw it on in. Well, not yet. We got to plug the numbers in and then we can throw it on into that calculator. So one half times the mass of the second object, which was 7.5 times 10 to the third, multiplied by the velocity squared, its initial, which was negative 0, 0 0.25 squared. Right now minus uh, one half, probably gonna have to write it underneath. It's gonna be one half times the total mass. Okay, remember the total mass is just these masses added together. All right, so let's just uh, do that quickly. Uh, you can throw that into the calculator. That should be somewhere. It should come out to be something like one point. What, what does it look like? 1.175, right? 1.175. Man, I'm still going to run out of room. So 1.175 times 10 to the fourth, right? And then that's, so, and then that's multiplied by the uh, final velocity squared, which we found over here. So that's going to be 0 .0, oh, 0 0.163. It's negative if you want, you can throw it in, but remember you're gonna square it so it really cancels it on out. So the kinetic energy lost now will be equal to, let's just calculate this. One second, let me just clear it out. Okay. Oh, one second, just realize as I'm looking at this, I made a little math mistake here. Sorry about that, guys. Just erase, I made the math mistake over here. Just going to correct that quickly. The mass is not that. I added a 7 in there, which I'm sure some of you, probably all of you caught. So I was just seeing if you were paying attention. So this is 1.15 times 10 to the 4th. Okay. So now let's calculate it. So now we should be good. So 0.5 times 7.5 times 10 to the 3rd times, if you want, negative point. Actually, I'm going to leave out the negative because I know it's going to turn into be a positive. You got to be careful here with parentheses, but just know that it will turn out to be positive. So you can just plug in the positive value anyway. And then that's going to be minus 0.5 uh, times 1.15 times 10 to the fourth uh, times 0.163 squared. So we get uh, about 81.6. Okay, so 81.6. 81.6, and that is in terms of joules, all right? So that's the amount of energy lost. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next 
uh, question. Letter C, repeat. I love that. Repeat both parts by using the frame of reference in which the second satellite was originally at rest. All right, so let's just do that quickly. I'm not going to rewrite everything because basically the only thing that's going to happen now is if you were to think, you know, remember we dropped this term out before. Instead of that term dropping out, uh, this term is now going to drop out because the second object is not moving. Right, so basically the only change in my formula here is going to be in terms of the numerator. All right, so my formula now becomes, instead of, you know, this formula over here, it now becomes, oops, M1 V1B over MT. Okay, and now we can just throw the uh, numbers on into the formula over here. All right, and that will then equal, I'm just going to keep working my way on over here. I feel like I'm doing an organic synthesis. So we have 4 times 10 to the uh, third multiplied by the initial velocity of b. Now realize that uh, this would have been 0, right? And now this is going to be the 0.25 meters per second. The difference now is I'm going to plug it in to be positive because it's moving to the right, okay? So this is now going to be 0.25, 0. And that's all divided by the total mass, which again we calculated before to be 1.15 times 10 to the fourth. And now let's just see what it comes out to be in the calculator. So four times 10 to the three. Four times 10 to the three times 0.25, all divided by 1.15 times 10 to the fourth. And we get a value here that's positive. So now here, continued on down here, um, the final velocity now of the system would have been 0 0.086, well, really 870, right? So that now works out to be, and that is in terms of, what do we get here? Meters, yeah, meters per second. Sorry, I was just looking at my other value. So the value, so now explaining this, the values here were different, right? Um, notice the magnitude, I'm not even worried about the sign necessarily, but look at the magnitude, right? 0 0.087 and this was 0 0.163. So the velocities are different right after the collision. Well, why is that the case? Well, because since I assumed this wasn't moving in, this, you know, in the first letter A over here, and uh, this was the one that was moving, and since it had a larger mass, it also had a higher momentum, right? Realize that this term up here is the momentum. And these numbers here in terms of the momentum are larger than in this problem. So that's why the velocity should have been greater, okay? Now in terms of then calculating, um, what did they want us to do? The change in kinetic energy. Okay, so we'd have to calculate that now. And again, you know, I'd be looking to um, plug stuff into my formula over here. Actually, let me backtrack. The difference now is that this kinetic energy is not the one that's canceled anymore. It would now be the second object, right? So that's now the second object that would be uh, canceled. So uh, it would basically be this. It would be kinetic energy um, lost would equal now. I'm just going to write it up. Actually, you know what? Just to save a little time, guys, I'm just going to change. I'm just going to um, change the color over here. So basically, this is not M2 anymore. This would be M1. Right? This would be V1, and everything still stays the same. Okay? So this is no longer the mass. It's now four times ten to the three. Uh, this velocity is still the same, but I mean, you can turn it into a positive again. It won't change the magnitude. And then the only difference here is then in the final velocity. It's no longer this number. It is now 0 0.0870. Okay, you could write this all out, but you know, just to save a little time here, we can just change the numbers easily. So now why don't we calculate that? So now we have 0 0.5 times 4 times 10 to the 3 uh, times 0.25 squared. All right, minus 0 0.5 times 1.15 times 10 to the 4th times then 0 0.087 squared, squared. I didn't put the square term down there, right? Well, I didn't have to. I just said I was plugging it in there. And look what we get here. 81.5 basically, right? Now I know it's a little off because we're rounding, but notice now the kinetic energy loss that we just found by changing the numbers is 81.5, which is basically the same thing, right, as my 81.6. The only reason why it's off is because of the rounding. 
all right? And why does that why does that make sense? Well, because look look at how the numbers worked out in this formula. You reduced you reduced the mass of the object, right? That was initially in motion and also the final velocity of the system at the end was also reduced. So therefore they should offset one another. Okay? So they're the same. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. I look forward to helping you out with the next question. Take care now.